So after the e-survey, what did you do next to find out more about the audience? Well, we did further quantitative research, but also some qualitative research. I'll talk about the qualitative work first, the primary research, although in actual fact the, the order of play was actually different. We did one before the other, but that's, that's no matter. Um, talking to audiences directly about their experiences of our work was something about, we, again, about which we had very little data. And there was a lot of anecdotal and empirical experience, but nothing actually on paper about how people responded to us. And uh, this work was, to me, some of the most interesting work that we did. And it had involved people all the way from um, people that were professional engagers through to people who were entirely new to our work, uh, uh, having a voice. Um, we started off by doing um, a series of what you might almost call Vox Pops, um, five minute interviews with people directly after five of our shows, ranging across everything from kind of quite hardcore experimental work to jazz to a bit of world music and simply getting people's reactions. Um, we also did some focus groups where the group was actually played 20 short extracts of the kind of work that uh, Sound of Music was going to represent and asked to respond to that. Um, then there was a kind of um, what you might call a total immersion experience where we took half a dozen people known to people who had been in those focus groups but who had no previous experience of attending a new music event of any kind, brought them into a new music event and in detail recorded their reactions to that event. And then, partly based on some work we've seen that the Film Council had commissioned, uh, we looked at some people at the other end of the spectrum who'd been involved in new music for a long time and actually made their made it their life in some shape or form, either as, either as a practitioner or an administrator, and looked in more detail at what their motivations for getting involved in the work had been. And from that we built up a very rich picture, directly from the horse's mouth as it were, of why people were engaging or might, why they might engage and what we could learn from that. To take some of the key learnings, one of the things that we learnt was that people's motivations for going to a new music event could be very different. On the one hand, there were people that went primarily for elements of intellectual challenge. Um, some went simply to be seen to be cool. Others went for something that was much more of an experience, if you like, much more uh, that, that could bring some kind of change or emotional response to them. Uh, the majority response to our events came in the first category, on the whole. That's what people tended to want. But the less their engagement with us was, the more that we found it was the uh, last of those responses, some kind of uh, emotional or simply to feel unusual or to feel part of a different scene. Um, we did learn quite a lot, particularly from the more total immersion experience, about people's expectation of going to events, uh, and also from the focus group, it must be said. Uh, we learnt that people like a certain sense of edginess around the event. They actually liked feeling that they would go to one of our events and feel that 99% of the population wouldn't want to be seen at such a thing, but they would, you know, because they were intellectually advanced and, you know, open-minded and up for stuff that the majority of the people driven by mainstream media might not. At the same time, people were vulnerable in that context. They could easily feel put off by any feeling of almost paradoxically exclusiveness around the event which felt as though it shut them out. So if they felt that um, they didn't understand what was going on. They hadn't got any link in terms of, um, you know, a venue that they knew or an artist that they knew. They could easily feel put ill at ease by that. And also that they liked a kind of um, element of safety, in a sense. They liked to feel that they could, you know, uh, move out of the event, get a drink, you know. If there's something about it they didn't like, that something new that was interesting would come along next almost a kind of magazine format, if you like. So we learned quite a lot about how people responded. The 
response of the audience that had never been to one of our events before was particularly telling. Uh, we took them to an event called Crazy Wisdom, which was actually took place at a new venue, King's Place, up in King's Cross, and was a kind of magazine format event based around bits of dance, bits of film, bits of new music, introduced by a compare. And they gave us very direct feedback about the marketing, uh, which pretty much they shredded because they said it, you know, it appeared to demonstrate something that the organisation was not. It appeared to be a kind of, in a sense, um, soft sell of something that was actually quite much more hardcore. And they gave us a lot of feedback as well about how the event was was presented, which I think even those of us who were actually involved in it might well have recognised and agreed with. In terms of the kind of life studies work, this was also very interesting to see at what point people started engaging with the organisations that were involved in sound and music. Um, and one summary finding was that people tended to engage quite late, later than we might have expected. They tended to be in their 20s when they were at university and they were already quite well formed. And a, a commonality, which also tied in with the Arts Council research, is that many of these people um, had, you know, had an early experience of playing an instrument at school um, and were almost all degree educated people. So we built up a picture of the kind of people that were, in a sense, in that 50% we learned from the e-survey, the music professionals engaging with us when they came to engage and why. So this further filled out um, the picture that we've been establishing into something that was very rich and certainly gave the basis for a kind of approach to marketing and audience development in the new organisation.